in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rosser, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. ago, Eddie Jacks went out for a pack of cigarettes. He came back last month. He came back determined to enter the life of his daughter, Rita. Unfortunately for Eddie, the wife he left so many years ago, Ada Jacks, stands between him and his daughter. And Ada is now filled with doubt about Eddie, convinced that he returned to Peyton Place for a much harder and tougher reason than to become a father to a girl who has thus far lived her life without one. Told us again and you're finished. Where you been? On my break. And since when did I give you a 45 minute break? Now time flies. You've been up to see the kids. Is that a crime? Hey, the baby! Just stay right there. Yeah, I've been to see the kids and a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Maybe we could go out back. You stay right there behind the bar, mister. Understand? From now on. And if you haven't got anything else to do, wash the glasses again. <laughs> glasses around here haven't looked very polished. <laughs> what a joint. Can I pour you a drink, Ada? Yeah, okay. Ada. What do you want now? A word with the management. You want another break or something? Or, um... Maybe you want me to fire you. <laughs> ah, I want to know where you were when Rita was growing up. Is this some kind of a joke or something? What was she doing, hanging out with trash? I don't know what you're talking about. Sure you do, Ada. I know one thing you've got no right to talk about, and that's bringing up Rita. Yeah, that's everything. Hey, hey, come on, finish your drink, will you? Yeah, all right. Now, let's have a beer. Hey, see you. That's a big idea. Nobody brought up Rita. As far as I can make out, you just opened up that back door when she was 12 or 13 and told her to get out of your hair. She never told you that. Can you deny it? So nobody brought Rita, huh? Well, how would you know what it was like just trying to keep food in her mouth in this dump off the block? Two weeks after you left, I was paying more money to the bank and in interest than I was for food. And in case you've forgotten, Daddy, the night you walked out of here to go get that pack of cigarettes, you took all the cash with you. There wasn't even a dime left to go call the cops with. We're talking about Rita. I'm not talking about Rita. Not to you. Oh, yes, you are. To me. Never. That sounds like a challenge. You're giving me a lot of lip, boy, for some of You want me to find and... out some other way? Now, Rita seemed pretty reluctant. It'd be a shame to have to force her to speak up. Don't you threaten me. Then talk. Oh, I get pretty stubborn at times, like now. And I'm gonna find out from somebody. Did Rita go around with a wild bunch at school? Yep. How come you let her? I couldn't stop her. What kind of a mother? A Did rotten I... mother. I was too busy playing father. Oh, that's an old cop-out, and I'm getting pretty tired of it, Ada. Other women bring up kids on their own, and the kids don't all run around with delinquents. Now, their mothers can stop them. How come you couldn't? Or maybe you didn't care. Maybe you didn't even know. Maybe you were so busy with your social activities and making a quick buck and your gentleman friends. You're way off base, mister, and I don't have to listen to any more of this. What was Rita doing with those kids? Having herself a ball. She is not like that. Not now, but she was lonely then. Weren't there any decent kids in town? Sure, but you don't make it as a decent kid just by being decent. You gotta live on the right side of town, have your own car and your own phone, and most of all, have your own father. Well, Rita didn't qualify. 
I remember Gus Chernak? Yes, he was tough and he drank a lot. Yeah, well, he had a boy, a few years older than Rita. Tough as nails and mean. Rita was his girl. She was only 15 or 16. What do you mean she was his girl? You mean she tagged along? No, I mean she was his girl. Until the Chernak kid got in a fight and got killed. Gus pressed charges and Rita had to tell them what a no good rotten punk this boy was. On the witness stand. And after that, no one would even talk to her. Except Norman. And through it all, you thought it was more important to be somewhere else making a buck. Oh, say something else funny. Ada! Oh, now you listen to me. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not God's gift to motherhood. But I'm not about to listen to you tell me what I should have done. Now, if you'd been around here, maybe I would have had time to fix this dump up into a, a real home, and maybe I would have had time to try to be a real mother. And you tell me how I was to tell that Chernak punk to stay away from my kid and make it stick. I tried it once, and you know what? He laughed. Well, maybe it would have been worse. A rotten father isn't much better than no father. And now, who's tending bar out there? Your husband, Ada. Can I get a beer? You're Eddie Jacks, aren't you? Yeah. You know, people must be wrong about you. How's that? Well, you're supposed to be big in the talk department, telling jokes and playing the piano and those kind of things, you know. I didn't think you were the kind of a fellow who believed everything you heard, Mr. Weber. How'd you know my name? How'd you know mine? It must be, um, nice working for Mr. Payton, huh? It's a job. Get out of here, Lee. Well, what did I do? I don't want you in here, and you know it. Hold it a second. Is um, Mr. Payton still the connoisseur of brandy? He always was. Compliments of the house. The best. Thank you, Eddie. What do you think you're doing? Are you going to do a card trick or are you going to play gin? Trouble with you is you don't take time to learn your hand. I have memorized my card. A lot of good it's done you, hasn't it? Discard, please. Need one more, don't you, son? Just play your own game. If there's one thing worse than going home to an empty house, it's coming here and watching you play Mississippi Gambler. How long will Connie be away? Uh, a few days, you know. If it had been me, I don't think I'd have let it go. First time that Rachel has asked to see Mrs. Carson and the baby. It's the first time she hasn't referred to Connie as her mother. Oh, 
And then she's making some headway. Oh, sure. Dr. Rossi and all the psychiatrists seem to feel that she's beginning to face some sort of reality nightmare. Seems to me he's putting an awful strain on Constance. Well, she wanted to go, Dad. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I didn't discard that. It just kind of slipped out of my hand. You discarded that card? No, I didn't. I didn't let go of it. According to the rules of this game, it isn't a play unless you let go. Then let go of the card. I don't think I will. There, try that. Ain't that dandy? Just dandy. Jim, 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 Jim. That's the name of the game. <laughs> Trouble with you is you don't have patience enough for this. Game. Trouble with me is playing with you. I don't have enough tricks. That's all. Uh -huh. How much? How much? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I owe you two thousand four hundred and twenty-three dollars and nine cents. <laughs> I'll take a check. I think you better. <laughs> One more game. No, One no, more not with you, my friend. Not with you. <laughs> Besides, Connie's only been gone a few hours, and that house looks like a cyclone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Thanks for the company, Dad. Yeah, I'll come back tomorrow night. I'll give you a real shellac. Uh, when you should begin to learn how to let go of your card. Yeah. yeah. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. Oh, Elliot. Oh. Visiting your father? That's right. How is he? Well, it's about like me, Eddie. I'm kind of tired, I think. I got just to pick me up. Ah, uh, no, not tonight. Some of that I special just, stuff no, you like? No, thank you, thank you, no. Well, I, uh, close the tavern a bit early. Generally, you know, I come back here and turn on the TV for a few minutes and relax and get away from the smoke and noise, but tonight, I don't know what it is. I just can't seem to unwind, you know? I thought I'd grab myself some of that cold night air. Yeah, yeah, well, 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 well. why tell me all this? Huh? Oh. Well, uh, you going outside? Yeah. <laughs>